couple of things are gonna hit the ground. Charlie go crazy. Charlie go crazy now we're going home. Charlie go crazy. Charlie go crazy now we're going home. That's in his head Climbing over the border In an MIG To Victoria From Rory Yeah Charlie go crazy Charlie go crazy And I'm falling home Charlie go crazy Charlie go crazy And I'm going home Good evening Welcome It's wonderful To be on Gino's spot Sit down, coming out of P.E. town A drink, find a shot, never mind your liver Get to Gino's spot Gino's spot Get to Gino's spot Gino's spot Have a laugh, have a giggle, and exercise your middle Have a Gino shot Gino shot Get to Gino's spot Gino's spot Get to Gino's spot Gino's spot Have a laugh, have a giggle, and exercise your middle Get to Gino's spot Namaste to everybody. Welcome to Gino's Spot. Uh, yo, so wow. Wow, I can't believe it. I came all the way from Cape Town. Like, uh, uh, sorry, my name's Lentil. Lentil Fasahi. Uh, Gino couldn't make the beginning part of the show, so he asked me just to stand in. So I'm standing in here to do the show, just to introduce. Uh, hey, make sure that you always tune where, you, where you're watching from, okay? Put it in the comments, put it in the comments, brah. If you're watching, I don't know where you are watching from. I check, oh, uh, how's Ula La Sexy? <laughs> whoa. Hey, whoa, man. Just like, peace. I've got my own girlfriend, you know. I'm Lentil Fasakhi, my girlfriend, Celery. Uh, you know, I even have to get my, she got my hair done, everything. Combed my hair for the first time in like 15 years, brah. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. When you run a comb through your hair, you know, not only combs, not, not only uh, combs run through your hair, not only thoughts run through your hair, no, also lice. Yeah, I found that out. And, uh, and you know, goofballs like me, <laughs> we, we, we like, we, uh, you know, you never associate a sentence ending like, um, like, uh, and then he got a promotion with someone like me, you know. Like I was in Port St. John's a long time, okay. A long time I've been meditating, because meditating is better than sitting around doing nothing. Like in Pretoria. <laughs> How's it, Jenny? Lovely to see you. I'm an XP and homesick. I'm glad you must come back and visit. Like it's really, really nice here. Like, I mean, we've got our own strait of COVID and everything. It's rad. Like... Hey, Derek Craig from Komiki. I've been, been catching a few waves, like sneaking into the ocean, maybe, just to catch a few there at Komiki, bro. Uh, Yorkshire, unfortunately, no waves whatsoever, bro. No waves in Yorkshire. Just funny accents that remind me of Monty Python all the time. Billy Old, that's obviously a brother or something, hey? You're going to get your brothers coming on, or, or your cousin is going to be on. Don't worry, Billy. Michael Canfield, wow, from Tilbach. Woo, that's like lang far away. Freak, bro. Like, I, the first I've been is like Rhodes University. That's where I saw Rhodes. I met my girlfriend, Celery, there. Um, I, went, I went to, uh, you know, Rhodes University. She was doing, uh, she, she, she was like, she, she was doing, uh, couldn't finish what she was doing in her course. You know, she's got a black belt in the partial arts. Anthony, just world leisure. Hello, Anthony. Nice to see you there, meditating there in Palma, Mallorca. I'm a hollow reed, bro. I'm a hollow reed. That's right. You know, you know my first date ever, okay, was, was, was we were hoping to go to Robin All concert, okay, with Celery, but we couldn't get, he wasn't playing, okay, that time. So um, instead, I got a, a, tickets to Britney Spears, hey, like, 
me and Celery, we hate Britney Spears. Like, we totally hate her. But it said on the tickets, the doors open at half past seven. And we freaking love the doors, bro. How's it, St how's Scott Young? Nice to see you as well, Scott. How's it, your friends? Yeah, indeed, we are everybody's friends on Gino's spot, bro. Okay, so let's get your comments coming. I'm going to sing them. I'm going to get my guitar, bro. I brought my guitar because we're all about the guitar players. We, of course, have Robin Ald tonight. Robin Ald, amazing guitar player, amazing songwriter, amazing singer, amazing, like, so many things. Uh, Kevin McKeever in the UK. Excellent to have some O's in the UK, bro. Okay, I'm going to put this on now. I wear from some albums. Wow. Watching with my back to the wall. <laughs> yeah, dude. Whoa. Oh, uh, whoa, bro. Great graves in York. Shockwaves, indeed. Bro, you're all locked down as well, bro. Don't worry. The whole world's freaking locked down. Uh, how's it, Michelle Repsold? Where are you, are you from? Uh, Dubai or somewhere uh, going out there? That's a fabulous. Uh, Michelle, uh, Michelle Oerstes, and indeed. Lovely to see you, Michelle. And, and of course, we have Jackie Sherlaw. Da! From Russia. That's right. Obviously. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Okay, let's see in the comments. Welcome to Gino Spot. Thank you very much to Fitch and Leeds, our sponsors, and to Spa, always, as well as Amobia. Let's get the show on the road. Can we do a little song? All right. All right, here we go. Well, take me back. Down with cool water flow, y'all. Let me remember things I've done. Mike Bowen said, Show, brah. All right, there we go. I can hear Sandy Weston calling me. I can hear Nick and saying, how's it to me? Look at Gary Fem, who go to water. Say, Gino, I'm from you tonight. That's right, the Hague's not a bad place to be. Well, From Johannesburg, Brian Wilkinson is here so often. I love the show, yes you do. Yeah, Gino, got my black rock, skipping across Green River. Robin Hall, that's right, 20 years. Welcome to Gino's Spot. Saw him about 20 years ago, I think. Oh, really? Mer Eden Moss? Well, let me tell you, you've been doing lots since then. That's right. Okay, Port Alfred. In Port Alfred, that's right. Port Alfred, glad just been through there. What a beautiful place. All right, welcome to Gino's Spot, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, and it's been fantastic. I've been looking forward to this one because we've got Robin Ald is in the house. That's right. All the way from Cape Town. We've got him from Cape Town. And he's going to come and say, how's it to PE? But you know the, the, the usual, the usual what we do. We've got, of course, what you're watching tonight. Darren Fuller couldn't make it. So for all time's sake, we've got Nadine all the way from Maltino who sent us her what you're watching for tonight. Let's have a look and see what you should be watching. Hey 
guys, Gary asked me to pop you a little video about what I've been watching on TV lately and um, quite honestly I have watched Brooklyn Nine-Nine five times in the last 10 months and um, the same for Schitt's Creek. So um, I don't know how much I can tell you about the things that are new. But I'm going to try anyway. Um, I was pleased to discover the other day that um, Elementary is now streaming on Amazon Prime. Um, all six seasons. Which was really cool because I didn't know that I hadn't seen the last season. And um, yeah, so break out the tissues. Um, and also I discovered the other day that Dexter is streaming on Showmax. Um, and they've also got all eight seasons, which is great because Dexter's getting a reboot soon. So, yeah, I tend to rewatch when that sort of thing happens. Um, I did discover a really cool movie the other day, which is different for me because I never watch movies. But there's a movie with Adam Devine in it called Jexy. And it's about... This guy whose phone gets a little bit super obnoxious and starts passing him around, and it's really, really, really funny. My child and I sat here yesterday afternoon laughing our faces off. Um, so, yes, if you have the sense of humor of a 12-year-old boy, it's definitely the movie for you. Just remembered that I totally forgot to wear my crown for Gino, so here's my crown, Gino. And um, also, Jexy's on show, Max. I forgot to mention that part. And Elementary has... Seven seasons, not six. <laughs> I love the crown. The tiara is so, so lovely, Nadine. All the way from Maltino. Also a place where lots of musicians seem to, seem to pop out of the woodwork. And uh, all these small towns. Marion Loudon, all the way from Durban. My Lord, Marion. I hope things are going well. Of course, of course, we can't sing at the moment. She's a beautiful singer. She sings like she's got a voice like a Mack truck. Waka chow! Dawn Taylor, hello. Hello to you, Dawn Taylor, as well. We are going to... Hello, Billy. We have got... Billy, we have got... We, which I think it would be your brother coming on around about now. Because, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's Robin Ald in the studio. Let's do a little introduction, first of all. Some waves. <laughs>
Donald, welcome to the studio, young man. Hey, that's it. How's it, man? Yeah. That was it's an absolutely spectacular video and and song. I love it. Thank you, man. Um, yeah, I hope I've like got some nice Cape Town vibes there. Yeah, there's that. So I got a bit of a Cape Town vibes going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so pretty, up here at Rhodes University, bro. Now, is that your brother? Um, no. Well, I, I guess if you go far back enough um, years, um, he's a mate of mine. We hooked up several years ago. And um, we've we've toured Scotland a bit, and uh, he keeps me posted on on gangs up, up north. Oh, right. okay, yeah. okay. Oh, lovely. Watching the history of folk music, as you say that. Uh, watching the history of of, of folk of uh, of history of future folk. Honduran's yes. rule. <laughs> Honduran. <laughs> Hondo Hondonians. The Hondonians. Lost, I don't know. Lost the Hond <laughs> no, I've lost. He's lost me as well. I don't know which Hondonians he's, he's talking about. Maybe the Londonians. You know, I'm I'm half Italian. Um, I'm on half Italian. It's Robin, so so it's it's uh, you know, Londonium is the real name for London. I, I know that from reading Obelix and Asterix. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I also Tell know because I've been to Italy. You know, in fact, my wife's favorite expression. The favorite sentence in the world to say is when we were in Tuscany. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> At dinner tables. <laughs> That's a happy place. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, no, no. My, my wife's the same. She'd go, she'd go. She's she's looking at that. What's that one dollar house? The one dollar houses. We got to go by there. Yeah. <laughs> you know that story. I think. No, I don't. You, you buy, don't. no, no. They're, they're, they're selling. They're selling the places in Tuscany. Um, in these old villages that are that are because of wow. uh, I presume COVID and 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 old old age. Uh, the people are dying off. So there's no there's an, uh, there's a, a a glut of properties. So they're selling them for one dollar. And, uh, and you have to go and fix them up. Huh. And then live Sounds there. good. Yeah. yeah, it does, but I don't know. I th I've got a feeling, feeling the fixer-uppers are going to be too hectic. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't move them right now. I'd wait a bit. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you might miss out. <laughs> you better, tell, better not tell your wife. She's going to be wanting it as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, no that, that, that song, that, that was from your, your, uh, well, your last uh, CD pr project. I presume it was, was it online? Was it a CD uh, album? Yeah, uh, the album was called Back of the Line, and that was the title track. <clears throat> we filmed that at, at Musenberg, which I'm sure you recognized. I love it. Uh, <laughs> long wave, long, long board. You? Long. Gives you time Jeez, to think so about things, Musenberg, you know? It does. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. <clears throat> um, yeah, so that, that, that's, I've actually been a bit lazy. I usually do an album every year or two. I haven't done one for four or five years now, so yeah. I need to put my socks up. Yeah, and, and I mean during during this time, have you have you sat with sat a bit, or have it has it been? I mean, for for a lot of Oaks, it was it was quite a shock. This whole obviously the COVID thing. So so it's like, uh, phew, you know, is, is Wayne Callis saying hello? By the way, <laughs> Wayne, hey, Wayne from our, Wayne. <laughs> from our, our rock, rock and roll show that we played. Yeah, the blues rockers. I think we did. Oh, it's that fun. Um, <clears throat> and, and, and Philip is saying you don't age. Uh, what's this? What's the sectet? Vitamin C. Um, Good lighting. See, see. Good lighting, Philip. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh man, uh, and and so I mean that that's because that, that that's a that's a lovely um, feel. That whole feel uh, as, as well it just suits that it suits that vibe. Obviously, your your surfing comes through in your writing in that in that way. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I, that one was a surfing one, but I tend to not write a lot of songs um, about surfing in the ocean. Uh, it's been part of my life, my whole life. So, you know, it'll pop out, but I don't sort of yeah. focus on it particularly, you know? Yeah. In fact, yeah, people yeah. Know, say, do you find the ocean inspiring? And I go, well, no, actually I find yeah. a hotel room uh, with, with, with four hours of the sound check. That's inspiring. You've got bugger all to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you're right, son. <laughs> but you, you don't find sitting on the back line there just thinking of tunes or, I mean, when you write, when you write stuff. I mean, you, you, your your creative process is is it is it just jamming on the guitar? Is it uh, you play a bit of keys? Um, I do play keyboards, but I write I write uh, on the guitar. I play uh, piano at school, um, but I, I sort of stopped once I stopped playing the guitar. But um, I write uh, on the guitar mainly, and then I'll I'll usually split sort of riffs, you know, because I was always yeah, yeah, start, yeah. start with a riff or a chord sequence, and then I'll write yeah, have yeah. lyrics. But sometimes it'll come together, and sometimes yeah. I'll write. Uh, lyrics that have been lying around for ages, phrases, or somebody says something, you, okay. you write that down. 
And it's kind of walking around like a junkyard. You know, you pick up bits and pieces and try and clack them together. And then you get a click for a chorus or a verse to go, okay, well, that's a beginning. And then, and then take yeah, it from yeah. there. Yeah. And I mean, do, do you find mornings are better for you or evenings, late at night? Or, I mean, I, I, you know, after a shower, they actually normally say that because it pushes the blood to your head. You know, go for a, go for a run or a surf, that I was saying, you know. Um, mornings are good before you settle into yeah. old habits, you know. That's, you, what, I, you that's what I thought as well. Yeah, you wake up before you've even done anything. You just sit down and pick up the guitar. Guaranteed, something new is going to pop out. Yeah, uh, and you've got you've got about fifteen minutes of that, and then you're going to settle into your old ways. So yes. you know you got to. <laughs> <laughs> you know those, 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 those licks that you pick up when you're yeah, waiting for, for people to arrive or something. You you, you just settle yeah. into those old licks. Sound check yeah. licks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's Gordon Wright says, missed you and Wendy at the goat shed this year, mate, she says. Goat shed. Uh, yeah, we've had a couple of good ones at the goat shed. That's a, that's a fun venue. Where, where is the goat shed? It's uh, Kenton on Sea. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah, no, hell, hell that, that's, that was uh, it's going to be pumping every single December, that place. Uh, yeah. I see Wayne, Wayne sh says you should come play with us again. It's not illegal. <laughs> <laughs> it was illegal last time, Wayne. Uh, <laughs> I, see, I seem to remember Oaks with, with DB meters outside the tent. Measuring yes. the sea with, 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 with a whole bunch did. of people complaining trying to shut us down. <laughs> yes, it was, it was, in, uh, it was uh, in Lorraine there at the, at the German club. I think we had the yeah. German club tent. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, a, a cash store, was it the, cash store? At the back of the cash store, yeah. Cash store, oh, the cash store, oh, we see. <laughs> oh, my word. We got away with it. And there was, wasn't there oh, this dodgy that was running it, and then he, then he disappeared and in, in <laughs> uncertain circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> I see uh, Sally, Sally saying she loves the creep. The kids are creeping behind you. you know? they, they, they can just walk, it's fine. We don't, we, this is, it's very relaxed. We, we don't care if people walk around. You don't have to dive in. You've got to live in your house as well, you know what I mean? That's fine. Absolutely. Well, maybe somebody brings some finger snacks just now. We'll see. <laughs> well, maybe they'll maybe they'll creep around with some. <laughs> oh no! He says a wicked piano player in those days. So you can't play a bit of keys. Well, you know, I played piano um, on my first album. I've, I've just put my first album at the corner onto a uh, digital. Um, All right. Yeah. I've got a so, picture of it actually. Let's see. Uh, I'm sure Gary's got a picture while you're talking there. Let's have a look. Yeah. There we go. That, that's him. Um, <clears throat> and one of the heat tracks <laughs> at Musenberg. All right. <laughs> it's very um, nice indeed. So, yeah. So, I mean, I, I didn't realize it. And I was listening to it again. There's so many things you forget. Yes. It was like my first album. Yes. I did that in like 1981. And I'd forgotten Jeez. that I used to play piano. A, and I forgot that I played piano on my first album. I played piano on like three songs on that album. I was like trying to remember them. And I've got friends that played on that album that, that I didn't remember either. Peter Cohen played on on Leon. Um, a drummer, eh? Yeah, a drummer. Um, yeah, he was, was Mango Groove, I think, Peter Cohen. Yes, yeah. And, and yeah. Bright Blue. And Richard Pickett's uh, oh, yeah. uh, drummer who's passed now. But uh, he, played, he played on the album. Uh, Tully McCulley played on the album. And it's... It was actually just nice to go through. So you said, like, listen to your old albums. It's a bit like looking at your old teenage photographs. Yeah. You know? <laughs> some of it kind of lasts, and some of it doesn't doesn't last so much. Yeah. Oh, there oh, we go. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that mop of hair. <laughs> all, all the hair. Yeah. There we go. Oh, you had a bit of a cut there. It was, that was that was kind of party at the front. Uh, what's it? Party at the party at the back. Business at the front kind of vibe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so Catherine says she's looking very handsome. Uh, there we go. Uh, oh, oh, that's my missus. Thanks, darling. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes she's right there. She said, uh, we, we, we're okay. We're watching them. They, she, she, they don't have to creep around. <laughs> Wayne's having a good laugh, I think. Uh, apparently, the horses don't like the blues uh, apparently, uh, at, at, the, at the cash store. Yes. <laughs> oh, my soul. And uh, oh, when's she, Maloka to enthuse us. I've never been to Maloka. I'll have to come. Have you been to Mallorca? I haven't. I haven't. Um, but we, we, we're working on it. We're working on it. It's going to happen sooner or later. <clears throat> well, I think, I think Anthony can just get us to come to From World Leisure. I think you yeah. better just fly us up there. Harrison, I'm, 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 sure, it'll, I'm sure it'll happen. If there's a nice link there. <laughs> Anthony's my, my partner in Shoreline Songs, my, my publishing company. 
and right. uh, he, he, he's a European uh, base for, for our activities. Oh. Yes. Oh, so he's involved in the music scene there, and there's always music coming in and out there, and lacquer roots stuff, okay. you know, banjo players, and it's all going on. You know, very, very oh. roots based, and lots of guys playing. So it's, okay. um, yeah, we'll get there. Have you? I mean, you, you must have enjoyed the new. I mean, also, I, I think your 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 music has changed so much since since your since your first albums, you know. Um, and and I think um, have you have you gone back to roots again? Have you have you? Is it like that 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 Mumford scene that came through? You know, like a freight train at one stage was, was, was sort of brought folk back into the into the mix. Well, they brought the waistcoats back. That's for sure. <laughs> so I'll, you know, when I saw those waistcoats, I thought, no, I've got I've got to get myself some of that. Um, no, 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 actually, you know, that, that, that's, they um, sort of exploded out of a London folk ethic um, that yeah, but yeah. They're actually super strong in the UK. So, I mean, I resonated with that for sure, because yeah. um, at, at the end of the 80s, I had a couple of t discussions with guys with major deals, the whole pop rock thing in the 80s was major label models. And uh, yeah. I ended up in the UK, actually, in, in a town called Hitchin. Yeah. Hitchin Hurts, as we like to call it. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, and, I, and I sort of fell into the, lo the, the local the, the local folk club there. The Hitchin Folk Club is one of the oldest okay. folk clubs in the country. So I went there and I actually just discovered that there were guys playing there, traveling the world with an acoustic guitar, making records affordably and putting their kids through school yeah. and, and actually having a, a, a life in music without having a major yeah. deal and all that. So that kind of, and it's very strong in the UK, you know, the, the, the root scene, acoustic people yeah. playing it's very um it's very thriving there's a, a lot of venues for it so i kind of thought well this is this is an interesting model and so i sort of worked on that i worked on it when i was in the uk and i came back to south africa and thought well maybe i can get it going here and for the last 15 years that's been mainly my bread and butter is getting in front of a crowd of like smallish 50 70 whatever people at the restaurant oh, yeah. and playing acoustic guitar telling stories getting a bit more hands-on you know the more sort of country yes, approach yes. Um, and that's kind of it, it. Travels light, and you can and you can stay in the business, yeah. you know. And I think so, I think yeah, that yeah. those when you when you connect with people like that in that sort of way, uh, you really make fans for life, you know. And they will buy your albums. They will go and download your stuff because they get to know you. I think it's an intimate thing, you know. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I mean, I'm not. I, I mean, I, I suppose I should be responding. I'm, I'm looking at with half an eye to to the comments no, going on. That's fine. <laughs> but she, she's she's just driving that home. I think she hasn't missed a gig of yours in PE. So that, that's the kind well, of thing Carol, you do, you know. Yes. Well, Carol is. I mean, you know, basically, if Carol, you, you have to check before you play PE whether Carol's in town or not, because she's not in town. No one knows not bother, you know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, but but I mean that, that intimate thing is, is so important, and and, uh, and I think um, you know a, a lot of the guys uh, I've heard this so many times that that uh, guys that 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 do record deals and they, and they go out and they tour, they'll tour every single small town in the Karoo and then go in the Free State and they'll tour these small places, but that by, and they might take them three years of eating bread and water, but by the end of that they've got this massive. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a, a base that that buys everything that they that they they, they produce. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the model's the same now. I mean, although it's gone digital and people release digital singles and all that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's yeah. still. I mean, even with my little label, you know, we'll release a digital album, but we still look at it the same way that you did when you released albums in the old days, which is you released the album and then you worked that for eighteen months. I mean, Springsteen, yeah. Dylan, these guys, they they went on the road. And they slogged it out, and that was the way you yeah. sold records. And the record company would actually facilitate it because there were big shows, big audiences. It cost yes. a lot of money to do it, and they would put money in because yeah. that's how you sold the records. So it, that 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 hasn't gone away, you know. And going yeah, even further, that's... you know, we, with the with the streaming um with the streaming thing, people are earning yes. so little for the for the streaming that um. Yeah. It's got back to, to even prior to those days where people made recordings just to try and get people to come to their shows because they were making yeah. money at the show and they wanted more foot th through the through the yeah. door. Yeah. But how can that we get door. people to come to shows? Well, we've we got to make a recording. And that's how those yeah. early guys in the late 40s and 50s, they started making these recordings so yeah. to get people to come to their shows. And we're kind of okay. back there. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's go, actually is full circle. It's a very interesting point that you've that you've struck on there because, you know, it's that that, that marketing thing. Before, whereas before uh, she's asking whether you're coming to KZN again. Yeah, I'm seeing that, but I'm just going to respond to Jackie here. Robin is a grandfather. Yeah. No, I'm not. 
It's actually a <laughs> Jackie. It's actually a source of some discomfort for my for my good lady wife because she's not a not a grandmother yet. Because she keeps on. Because my kids are just being very slow. They're just not with the program and they're not delivering. <laughs> Don't <laughs> complain. Don't complain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great father. I'm a gad. No, no. So, so, but but what you're saying is that basically we, you know, the record companies, because I, I, I think uh, um, when when you did your first album uh, in in the '80s, um, the the guys the guys that were releasing albums, you had to actually press a flipping LP. You know, that's not cheap uh, to record yeah. in those days. It was, it was not cheap either. You had to book that studio out for three weeks or two weeks or whatever you're going to do, or four days if you were desperate. You know. Um, but, but you had to actually, there, there was so much you had to do before you even got to that first point of creating an album. It's like, it's like you, you had to have your head above the rest of the gigging bands, for one, because uh, an A&R guy would have to notice you or, or see you. I, I mean, I don't know if this is the case. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surmising. Well, because, it was expensive. I mean, a roll of tape, yeah. two-inch tape in 1982 yeah. cost three and a half grand. I mean, That's a lot nobody of money, had that. You know, I bought my first guitar, my Ibanez. Uh, Concord. I bought it in like 1980 for 300 bucks, and I paid it off over two years. <laughs> <laughs> two years. <laughs> so exactly. So three and a half grand was a lot of money for a roller tape, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, so, so, so did you have to have that, that record company behind you? I mean, did you yeah. have to have it in the beginning? You couldn't really make one with, without a record company. Yeah. Um, so now. Yeah, I mean, now it's kind of, it, 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 the tools are in the hands of everybody, but by the same token, yeah. when it comes to actually getting noticed, yeah. you still kind of, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it, it, it's very hard. You know, you kind of still need to be signed, really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. Too. Because then, it, then it's the money that it takes to pay Facebook, to pay whatever, to get the, get the name out there, you know, that's, I suppose yeah. that's the thing. Well, now, well, now what you had is you the, the ease to make a, easy to make a record, but now every yeah. openness dog can make a record, and we're all artists. Yeah. You know, now Instagram's come along, everyone's an artist. And so yeah, it's, just, it's just completely swamped. And yeah. so to go through that, you kind of still need yeah. the label, really, you know? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's true. So are we back in, are we back there again, man? <laughs> For God's sake. The Same as the old boss. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, like, Stuart Portugita says, hi there, Robert. The first time I saw you play was a Brass Bell 20 years ago. The Brass Bell wow. is a lovely venue, hey? Yeah. Um, yeah. Have you played the uh, pre-COVID? Um, no, I, we, I, every now and then I do. do uh, we did a little run of Shoreline songs at at uh, upstairs venue at the Bell, which went was very lacquer, and uh, we still played here and there. Um, but you know, that, that period in the eighties was was when it was it was a different time. You know, as you said, it was, it was pre-digital, so yeah, you had yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick and Stellenbosch and the Hidden Cellar and the Brass Bell, and that was that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, we so I mean, yeah. most people that I know that are my age, they saw me at the Brass Bell at some point, at some point in time. You know, that was like uh, one of those years. three venues. Yeah, I still kind of say, if you actually heard me at the Bell, you probably weren't really there because everybody was so drunk <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> oh, classic. I so, said, you live in Cork Bay at the moment. Um, well, uh, we in, actually at the moment we're in Musenberg. We're in Cork Bay. Oh, yeah. uh, but we're staying in Musenberg, which is my old hood. Uh, just while they're doing okay. some renovations um, in, in Cork Bay, so we're here till kind of mid mid winter. But it's my old hood, so I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, I mean, because I, I know was, is that is that Fishhook's side there? Eh? Yes. Uh, yeah. That's, do, that's do, kind you, of, do you know um, Paris? You know Paris Lucas? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I've, I've <laughs> no, recorded there, there, there and we've done work there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good man. Oh, no, Paris is an absolute legend. He's also got a, and I, I hear you've got a beautiful view of the bay. And I know he's, when we recorded there, the drums were set up right at his window and we looked up over, over Fishhook. It was just the most beautiful place to, to lay down tracks, you know? Yeah. No, he's got an awesome spot there. Is he still, is he still going? Have you seen him recently? Uh, not very much, eh? I think he's kind of pulled back from the recording side a bit. So I'm, okay, I'm not okay. too sure where But I, uh, I recorded with him, I think, last time about two years ago, did a session there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, someone could tag him then. He's got his, what, what a legend. And, and so many bands as well been through there. But let, no, Robert, let's, let's go. Let's take a step back. I always go right back, right back in history. I want to go right back to the beginning. You, where were you born? Where did you grow up? Um, well, I haven't grown up yet, but um, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it. But I, okay, I, uh, I, I was born in, in Lusaka in Zambia, uh, Lusaka General Hospital. 
and uh, I so we, we I started off there till I was about six or seven. Then I had a bit of a stint in the UK in Scotland, uh, Kilwinning, um, which is on the west coast of Scotland. Um, okay. uh, we were there for a little while, and then we went down to England for a little bit, and then we came out to South Africa when I was ten years old. And oh, okay. um, we, we moved out to Fishhook, and then so basically my school years, primary and high school, were, were, were at Fishhook, which is which okay. is the valley. Which we, we talk about Fishhook Valley, kind of like. Hotel California, you know, you can check out anytime you like, but you never leave. You know, <laughs> even when people leave, they come, they come back there. It's just got this magnetic sort of thing. You know? Okay, okay, yes, yes, it's like yeah. a magnet. It's beautiful there. It is beautiful. It's got definitely got its own vibe, eh? Um, yeah, I mean, saying hello. Yes. Hey, has it? <laughs> uh, uh, um, yeah, we we um, you know, at our side, I mean, we we call it Cape Town, but strictly speaking, we shouldn't really be allowed CA number plates. Yeah, because we we hardly ever we hardly ever go into town. And, Is it like um, Utenagen dispatch on our side? Well, I don't know what. Probably, yeah. They <laughs> say you come from, You know, you come from dispatch if you got curtains in your bucky, but not in your house. Yeah, so well, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> sure. I've, I've been to actually. You know, PE has got a, a whole bunch of beautiful places around it. When I was touring with Wendy last time, we were doing it. We were in Oatshorn. And we drove like a back road, sort of maybe it was through Uniondale or something. We came out. Yeah. Um, uh, such a beautiful part of the world. You know, Lundcliffe you always think pee and the coast, but you get in there a bit, it's, it's gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. And I, I have to say, um, I also love PE because it's the only place in the world where I've, where I've had a beer stolen from me while I was on stage. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you can't you can't turn your back for a minute in this place, you know, especially uh, when it comes to dope. <laughs> just personal, just, just, just a music kitchen, and this oak wanders in <laughs> from outside like this lone guy. You know, they, you know they're walking off with you like completely schmangled, yeah, yeah. To, uh, <laughs> and he sits down uh, sort of at my feet, and I can check him looking at my beer, which is at which is at my feet, which is where I keep it when I'm playing. And I'm mid song, and he's like looking at my beer like. And he starts going forward like this. You know, you're not going to, are you? No, he, says, he, had, he had no idea. And I thought it was quite, in, you know, inventive because I couldn't stop him because I was busy playing a song. So so now, every time I go to PE, they always steal my beers just to keep the joke going. <laughs> oh, man, that is very funny. Paris Zenos, that's the guy's name. But Darren, Darren Peens has got it there. Hey, how's it, Darren? How's it, Darren? He says the Russian Bengals. Uh, I'm not even going to go there. That's a, that's an in joke that you don't want that you don't want on pu public domain. <laughs> Scott Young, I think it was about '84 when you did a show to open up the Pick and Pay Centre in Sun Valley with your band ZSD. That's right. That's right. Wow. Was, was you remember these that. gigs? Vaguely. I mean, you know, some <laughs> gigs are, are sort of vague, and some of them are so terrible that you've just forgotten them, and some yes. of them are so painful that they're seared into your soul forever. You know, so. <laughs> okay, so so ten years old, you moved to Cape Town, and that's why you got the, the obviously the South African accent. You're not gonna, you, you didn't get the Scottish vibe going on there. Or do you speak? Is, is your parents Scottish? My my mom was broad Scots till she died, and and, oh. and my dad um, was he could he could do um, a very good Glaswegian accent, um, but he was yeah. quite highfalutin. He he studied for the bar. He was like a magistrate oh. and so on. So he was quite he was quite hoity toity, but. Oh, you right. could go Gosh. into that region and say, I'll give you me a give you a hidden your hand to play me. You know what I'm saying, Jamie? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, so he, he, would say, he, would, he would talk like that I quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because it's true. That broad, broad, that broad accent, you cannot, you cannot get it. As, as a muso, you, you think you, you've, you've got that ability to, to hear melodies and, and accents, but no, not with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Well, I mean, I've, I've worked with the glass region when I worked in a post office in London for a while. And I mean, I'm Scots. My, my aunt Mary was broad Scots. I could not understand what the sake was saying a lot of the time. You know? <laughs> oh no. Okay, so so Fishhook, and then high school. Uh, uh, finished high school. Off. To, 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 you didn't study at all. Just straight into music. Uh, well, I, I had a sort of few pathetic attempts to try and get a day job. All <clears throat> right. Yes. Um, which didn't didn't end well. I'd, I worked for Musica for a while, which was which was actually oh. quite cool. That was probably my best day okay. job. <clears throat> I worked oh, at Musica, yes. and then I then I left. Uh, I was playing with the Lancaster Band at that yes. time. I started playing the Lancaster Band, and we were playing gigs a lot, but it wasn't it wasn't professional. 
And then I left music and I moved to Seapoint to play with Steve Walsh. Oh, that, yeah, there's, there's, there's your band. Lancaster band, is that it? <laughs> that was, yeah, that's how we butcher Robin Lancaster and, and Lloyd Martin. That was that particular period. There was, there was a later period where Brian Davidson joined the band <clears throat> and yeah. when it was kind of a more new wave, punky kind of thing. Um, but Lo when I started Lloyd Martin I on drums, did you? Yes, and he's a PE yeah, boy. We, he's PEs, yeah. He's yeah. He was on the show I last know. week. <laughs> That's it. Fine, yes. <laughs> top black, fine drummer. Br brilliant drummer. Yeah. Okay, so and that was like scar, scar vibe. Um, he, well, not so much. They went into a scar thing after a while. They, when we, we in that stage, we were playing yeah. like Santana, Bob Marley, a lot of covers, Doobie Brothers, okay. not a lot of original stuff. Then yeah. uh, Brian joined the band. We went into the new wave sort of thing where we were playing. Police uh, and the members and, and the rats and kind it. of that kind of post-punk okay. sort of scar thing. Yes, uh, which we left after that, and then then okay. the Lancaster band went into that kind of full-on scar period, and okay. they made Comic Strip Heroes, that album of theirs. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, it wasn't a fully professional thing when I was in it. <clears throat> when I left that, I went to, as I say, I went to Sea Point, and I, then I, then I sort of became professional, and okay. I started playing. Then I moved. Then I moved back after C C point a year in, in in the big city. I moved back yeah. out uh, to Cork Bay, and I moved into Cork Bay, and I, and I got a gig playing at a place called Fanny's in Claremont. And I was playing. <laughs> I was, yeah. Nice. <laughs> and uh, there's two. There's a British couple that ran it, and we play. Okay. We played uh, five nights a week, uh, ten to two in the morning, four sets. And I was playing with Rob <laughs> Robert Hack, who ended five up playing. Five nights a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Geez. We made so much money. I tell you, uh, we, we, I was getting seventy-five bucks a night, and uh, it was fine. So I could, and I couldn't get out to spend my money. I had a blue panel van and an eight by ten Marshall cab. What else do you need? And uh, and a strat. Yeah, so it was so it was, so it was great. And uh, then the Sunday nights we played at the Hard Rock, and then we had okay. Monday nights off. But um, so we played it for a long time with Robert Hack and a Korg five hundred five. And that was kind of the beginning of me becoming a proper professional and also just, okay. you know, it seems, I mean, nowadays, if I, if I have to play three sets in a night, I get a bit kind of freely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think about it, if I'm not four sets a night, I mean, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Insane. I mean, but, but I mean, that, that, that's cumulative, that sort of gigging. It, it, it wears you down eventually. Well, I, I think when, you, when you're young and when you're young and, 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 and Orman Dorm, you know, it's it's kind of you just you just want more of it. I mean we used to get home at I used to get home at four or five in the morning. I'd sleep <laughs> late, but then I would surf uh, at Cork Bay Reef. Yeah. So I was like right by Cork Bay Reef. So I'd surf all day as well. And that was the only two things in my life. So you know, you've got plenty of time. <clears throat> and um Thank uh, you, tell me that those the, 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 we got some wine. Have you got some wine? Cheers. Cheers. Some, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Cheers to you. Ching, ching. Cheers. <laughs> oh, Fanny, that, that's uh, Carol Jean saying Fanny. She was from Cape Town. Heavy breather uh. garlic bread. Okay. <laughs> Elves, bells. That doesn't sound great. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that right there, Carol. I'm just... All right. <laughs> Gig stamina, you're right. You, you you have to be gigging fit as well, I suppose. You know, it's it's um, if you're doing that sort of that. Sort of, and were you doing original stuff then as well? Um, I started writing original stuff, and I was actually playing at Fanny's when uh, my first album came together, which was at the corner. And Kevin Shirley, um, the producer, he oh, was yeah? producer. He, he was working at at Tully's at Spaced Out Sound, okay. and um, he was he was a sort of a, an apprentice engineer uh, and he was coming in for gigs he came to watch the steve Walsh buddies band a few times i was playing with as well and he would come in and he'd be like my guitar playing and we started talking about making a record so that was that so we embarked tully um sort of put up the city well we'll put up the studio time and, yeah. and you know a little bit of uh, budget and yeah. so tully kind of you know facilitated the record and kevin produced it and we put time um Put time in, and we used like a, a variety of guys that were around Captain at the time, and that was Kevin Shirley's first record and my first record um, at the corner. He was, uh, yeah. He so was like, the first one, 80, 81. Yeah, I think it was eighty one. Might have been eighty. But I mean, Kevin, Kevin, you know, he, he left South Africa in like uh, we made. I made a bunch of more records with with Kevin, and we had that was the sort of successful eighties pop rock period with All of Women and Baby and Good. And we had like charts and that with with that. And then Kevin moved abroad. To, he went to yes. Aussie. 
And he's gone on to, you know, he's working with Joe Bonamassa mostly now, but he's, yeah. he's mastered Led Zeppelin albums and, you know, done Yeah, I know, no, he did some amazing stuff. I know that, that the one, yeah. a big thing, he came back, well, yeah, it was, was for me, it was, I remember him doing the Springbok Nude Girls album. That, uh, That's right. Uh, super, I can't remember what the name was of the album, but uh, it was also a great sound. And, yeah. um, and there we worked with Neil Snayman, with... Um, and who was then apprentice as well. So all these, all these engineers, I suppose, they all help each other as they, as they go along. And now, yeah. I mean, we're talking about production now, and, and I've, got somebody, I've got somebody here that, that, uh, that, that will talk to you about, a bit about production and, and about blues, because the, the, the joke is that, that uh, I'm, I'm the happy drummer, um, and so it turns out I'm, I'm too happy to play the blues, apparently. Although I love playing blues, I play it all the time, but apparently I haven't had a hard enough life. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's so bad to have a little bit of yin and yang in the band, you know. Yeah, no, if, I think example, if you were happy as the drummer, you know, you could have a really miserable yeah. front man, and it would probably exactly. work out okay. You know, no, no, we, we, did. we actually had a miserable <laughs> guitar player. I've got him right here. I'm going to bring him in. I'm going to bring him in for you. Uh, here he is, Darren Beans. Uh, I don't know if you oh, Darren. Darren. <laughs> now, I, I got Darren in just to ask you a bit about production because Darren does. Does does some production stuff, so he he, he would definitely have some questions. Is he is he there? Oh, he's frozen. I, I can see him. Okay, can you see him? Can we, can we hear you, Darren? When it was a black day, the day you came over the hill, and it was a black day. Steel is gold Games of blue, blue sky And my time is done Oh, for all that you deny <laughs> that's great she's like i love it i love it that's, it's, it's, that actually, it's actually it's actually leicestershire philippi philippa philippa it's, it's, it's leicestershire and i filmed that whole oh, thing by myself. yeah uh, okay <laughs> oh she said it looks like scotland yeah. i was like, darren can you hear us 
Oh, no sound. Oh, no sound, Darren. We haven't got sound for you. Like we could just you make you making uh, the low way that going like okay. No, 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 still not. No, <laughs> no, no. We're not getting sound yet, Darren. We have to come out. We'll have to come go go out and come in again. We'll see if we can get you. But no, nothing, nothing. But uh, tell us about that. That's uh, that blues. Um, is that a blues album? Um, it was a, a, a kind of a blues album, blues roots album called Fingers in My Pocket, which I recorded in London with uh, Barry Finzel and an Aussie Barry. bass player by the name of Simon Horn. And we did the, okay. the rhythm sections in like two days. You know, we just had a, had a we, we actually managed to blag a studio from, from a consortium of reggae producers in London. Oh. Which was actually really <laughs> nice. They had, these, they had these like amazing spring reverbs like massive things hanging from the wall, Whoa. you know, and all that. Um, Jeez, like so we, we, did, we did the backing tracks there. Then I, over, I overdubbed some stuff um, at Le in Leicestershire and in, in Melton where we were living. And then we mixed yeah. it mixed it there. And um, so it's not a full-on blues album, but that, that that's a kind yeah. of a blues track that is a mix of, you know, I, I wanted to make like an African equation. I'm a big fan of Malombo yes. and Philip de Barney. Um, so I hear, so that those kind of inversions are very similar to what the, the rock and roll actually used, used to play in the, in the late 50s when it was just moving from yeah. kind of you know the major key stuff to the pentatonic blues thing and i always want to find that yes. very interesting so sorry i'm getting a bit waffling a bit technical here but um no no no, no it's fine it's fine it's I'm, a mix I'm, I'm of the african and, 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 and traditional yeah. blues things, yes because you've got you've gained more and more that african kind of feel that that's uh the, the, the vibe, you know, as as we've as you've got older and, and got into it, your songwriting has um, has changed, you know, over, over the years. Yeah, I mean, it's also the production change because in the eighties, yeah. um, you know, the drums didn't sound like drums, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I felt the, I think the drummers suffered the most in the eighties. You know. Round about, God. <laughs> round about, <laughs> round about the time the Lin drum came in. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there were these huge gated snares going, yeah. and, uh, you know, and, <laughs> and stops, all that kind of stuff yeah. going on. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, and, and it was a very 80s kind of a thing. And also, you know, Kevin's production, he's, he's got a very expansive, big, you know, he makes recordings very big and so on. Um, yeah, okay, okay. So that's the way the songs went, and they were successful, you know. So, uh, yeah. but, but in actual fact, I mean, I was always listening more to more roots-based kind of recordings, you know, Little Feet, JJ Cal, Diddy Dan. Uh, stuff where it's more based around people playing, so it's just kind of naturally drifted that way. And I, I made albums with with Lloyd Ross from Shifty Records, um, that yes. was kind of also very much more. He's he just sort of gets the arrangement right and then puts mics in front and then gets out the way kind of a thing. Um, okay, okay. So so that's more the kind of a recording that I enjoy and I prefer it now. And it's it's and thankfully yeah. it's gone a lot more that way to where yeah, yeah. Um, you know it, it, it's it's now cool that you can just actually play in a band and play your guitar and, and that's fine again you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's like like proper uh, the, the, so so get down to to basically hearing what you what's coming out the amp in the room or, or coming out the drums in the room that's that's uh, yeah that's and hearing a band well having said um on sa radio you don't get it very much no um, no, no no you don't, you don't. <laughs> which is kind no, of weird you. you know we make so much of it. We make so much beautiful roots music and instrumental music and guys that yeah, can play. Yeah. But it doesn't seem to make it on the radio. And it's weird because we get almost kind of hoodwinked into this idea that this is the, this is how the modern world is. It's not. Yeah, it's not yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah. It's not. And, and but, like uh, you're saying again, the live the live shows are becoming more and more important. Um, you know, uh, it's it's feet through the door and 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 making sure that you earn a living out of your out of your craft, and and it's it's because you're a skilled muso that you that you pop your head up above the other guys, you know. Oh, thank you. Yes, Barry is another key boy, Barbara. <laughs> yeah, Barry. Yeah. Is it Barry from Sale? Yes, ba yeah. Barry from Sale. Absolutely. Uh, I'm just. Uh, I, I see that because there's there's a whole bunch of people from all over the world watching now. Now I see that there's a you were talking about the African feel. And there's, a, there's an over the mountain thing that you were doing now. Let me, let's just have a quick look at this video. Can't 
to me in a dream before I saw your face. Saw you in the sky from a lonely place. I knew your heart before I knew your name. Now and forever it'll be the same. Over the mountain I wait for you. lovely that tone Ooh. thank you man it's clean it's so nice <laughs> and clean beautiful and, and tell us about that project that's that's obviously barry for sale um as i say pe boyke as well yep and that's jayo buys um who played bass on it i recorded that that song actually in london as well and then we did the okay. video just when we came out because everybody was was in town at the same time Okay. um the drums actually barry barry's just a model in that in, in that video oh really I, I hate to <laughs> yes it's actually andy green playing the drums but oh, um really? yeah um but um he, he doesn't have to he doesn't have to worry he's on he's on he's on um tons of recordings that and some of them yes. um we've got too much time to go into but like uh my uh, over the mountain album um yes. barry as well and uh yeah he's a wonderful okay. drummer um, but that, that song, um, I wanted to write that song about the, the notion of that you know somebody, and you get that with people, where you, you, oh, yeah. you meet somebody and you feel like you knew them already. Um, sometimes you meet, I've had that yeah. with people where, where I've met them and they've Deja been really old, at the old, old, very old at the end of their lives. And, yeah. and you sort of meet them and you think, well, but I've, I've bumped into you before somehow. And it's just kind of, it might be completely hippy-dippy stuff, but it's yeah. just this notion of, of, of knowing people before you before you actually met them physically, you know? It's like a deja vu kind of kind of feel. Yes, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. And, and, and uh, I mean, th that's, um, that whole African feel going on, I, I, saw, I saw another video, which we, have, we haven't got this, but it was uh, Alone But Together. Was that, uh, was that recent? That was recent. That was during uh, the lockdown thing. That was for a project that I do um, with a guy uh, by the name of Greg Mills, who's an author, um, political author. Yeah. And he does, um, uh, he writes books that are, and then we travel throughout Africa um, uh, to promote them. And I, I write a song with him. And this one was uh, yeah. Alone But Together. I actually co-wrote this <clears throat> with Greg, and then we did it with Bobby Wine from Uganda, who, by the way, is like this um, hectic politician um, as well, young guy. Oh, really? And he's in Uganda, and he's, he's, he's running to try and overturn uh, Museveni in Uganda. Man, Jeez. we're having a hard time of it, but Bobby Wine has been having such a hard time of it. They get he, when he ever has a meeting or they or they or they give a speech, they get baton yeah. charged and beaten up, and the Oaks get. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's terrible, you know. But um, really and he's a great singer. So we did this we did yeah. this video, uh, just to sort of encourage people to be at home, <clears throat> um, yeah, okay, and to feel good about being alone, uh, as it's kind of seems to be the only real way to get to get the numbers down. 
um, yeah, yeah. And just to make people feel a little bit better about about having to go through it, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I think um, I, I'm going to put on I'm going to put on that thing. I think Gary's got it here. Let me, let's have a quick look. Uh, it's got like a. a <laughs> Times are here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Searching for the answer. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Don't be a victim. Be a solution. We have to persevere all alone, but all together in our homes for each other. I know we'll find a way in Africa. In Africa. No, don't neglect. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Isolate to connect next. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Don't be a victim, be a solution. Tomorrow in our hands. All alone, got all together in our homes for each other. I know we'll find our way in Africa. In Africa. Inclusion, oh yeah, oh yeah, climb the ladder, oh yeah, oh yeah, don't be a victim, be a solution, respect for one another, all alone, but all together, in our homes, for each other, I know we'll find our way, in Africa, in Africa. I see that, uh, that, that, um, uh, that, uh, that uh, even Helen Zilla, I think I saw there. Was that Helen Zilla? Was it? Uh, yes. Yeah, there's a big spread. I mean, when you play that in Africa, it's like, they don't know the South African guys, but they, there are some really big African figures on that on that video. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> I love the yeah. Goomba. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, the, we, got, we got like millions of views on that, uh, you know, throughout Uganda, and, you know, Kenya, Nigeria. Did very well. Oh, yeah. man. Well, I'm glad uh, we got Darren on. Uh, can, you can hear us and we can hear you now, Darren. Can you hear me? I can Fred? hear you now. Yes, yes. How's yes, it, Robin? How are you doing? All right, man. I'm bumped up, Darren. I'm, I had a date booked for uh, the Brew Company, uh, St. Francis, you know. With, with, oh, wow. with Lincoln. oh, the Brew Company. Yeah, we just, I, yeah, we just had to, I saw we you had wearing the shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're wearing the shirt on the video. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah. Um, we had to knock it on the head, you know. We, we can't, uh, you know, so it was... I had a yeah, bunch yeah. of dates coming up the coast, but that's going to have to wait. Yeah, okay. the Eastern okay. Cape. We, we, we wait in anticipation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, looking forward, yeah. man. Okay, Darren, so, Darren, um, you, you're gonna, you, you're gonna, you wanted to ask some questions on the, on the, on the production side and a bit of the blues. So I'm going to leave you two to have it. Uh, go for it. You can, you can co-host. Well, uh, so firstly, let me say, um, Robin. Firstly, I am um, your song "Love Kills." 
um, when I was much younger, was one of the first songs, South African songs that I heard that, I mean, by, by the age of, I don't know, I must have been 22 or 23, but to hazard a guess, um, I'd already heard so much music in my life because, I, you know, they're such an appetite for new music. Um, and the, I don't know if the same has happened with you, but as you go on, you kind of like, um, your palate kind of develops for melody, you know, and you, and you like hearing different new stuff that isn't the obvious. And um, that song was really one of those songs for me where the melodies were just so fresh and, and intriguing. So, so I became a fan a long, long time ago. <laughs> yeah, thank you, man. Thank and, you. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was, uh, it was also like came from a guitar kind of a thing, you know, uh, from a, you know, that G kind of drone kind of, you know, tune, <clears throat> yeah. um, you know, the, the, the song develops from that. Often, often I'm kind of writing a song and I've got the chords and I try and find, and I'm sitting, looking for a melody and I have to remind myself all the time, go back to the guitar because you, you, you don't want to just be singing the melody that the guitar is doing, but actually I have to do that. I sort of have to go back to what the guitar is doing. And then if I, if I work, pick up on that, then I, then I get the tune. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was one of those, you know? <clears throat> yeah. So, so how much how much do you write? I mean, are you like a prolific writer that's writing every day? Um, do, you, do you still put a lot of time into writing now? Or is it just kind of when you're feeling it? Darren, I'm being so swack at the moment. It's terrible. Oh, I, really? I, I haven't been writing at all. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I've, I've been working a lot um, yeah. with, you know, on my little, you know, I've got this republishing label. So I've been, I've been producing albums for other guys. And the last yeah. two years with Shoreline Songs, we, we've been doing albums for... We just released one for Jamie Jupiter, uh, Michael Canfield. We've been a beautiful jazz record with Alan Cameron. Um, you know, we've we just done a bunch of stuff. Steve Walsh, we just released the album for. So I've been, oh, I've been wow. quite, quite, quite proactive. Uh, Steve's album's great, by the way. It's very, very lacquer. Um, really? Yeah, I mean, I'll send you some if afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Tap me and I'll, yeah. I'll send you a copy of it. It's really nice. Yeah. Um, so, I've been, so I've been busy with that, but I haven't really been writing my own stuff. And I, I don't know quite why. Um, I, it's also I'm very busy at home, and in, in bygone years, you know, I would I would start to write a, an album and go like I've got thirty songs, let me hack it down to twelve. Now yeah. I'm going to, I've got thirty I ideas and, I've finished one, and I haven't finished one of them. So, <laughs> so right yeah. now I need to get I need to get out the house to write. So my writing process is is not what it was, and I and I and I, I need to I still haven't quite figured out how to how to address that. But I think I need to get I need to get out the house and go up the, and go up the coast with a surfboard, yeah. and take a week and just actually get into that thing where, by day two or by by day three, you wake up in the morning and you you're in that space and you can write. Yeah, I mean you you you, 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 you must write a lot. I mean you, you you're living the life of Riley there in St Francis. <laughs> well, okay. uh, trying to. I've actually um, I was watching a, uh, um, a docu the other day with um, one of the old. Um, uh, Woodstock era female artist I can't remember what, what her name was now but she was saying when because obviously now we're looking at this whole COVID thing and the way we've been locked down and she, I kind of got inspired by her because she said when she had kids she actually decided to go completely off live touring and just write so what she would do is I mean she wanted to become a mom and focus on being a mother um, she would write from 5 in the morning till 8 every day just wake up and try and get yeah. into that space. So, yeah. it's, and, and she remained like seriously disciplined about it. And um, yeah, so I've been, <laughs> I attempted that. <laughs> it hasn't worked out that well, but, but definitely it has put me onto a track of writing again as well. Um, I think, I think the in the morning thing is good because I don't know what you, what how you find it, but I find like, um, I, was, I was saying to Gina earlier, you wake up in the morning, you pick up the guitar, you play something, it's going to be something you haven't played before. I don't know why that is, but it's like if you sit down for five minutes, when you're first working up, you'll play something. Then when the day settles in, later on in the day, you're likely to just fall into those old patterns and things that you play all the wow. time, just fall back on. And I, and, and I do that a lot, you know. So the first thing in the morning, I think that that's a good thing, especially when, when one starts getting on a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or when one gets too comfortable, because <laughs> comfort yes. is the enemy of songwriting, eh? Yeah, no, absolutely. So, 
Yeah, so I'm actually looking forward to the process. I'm going like I'm not I'm not stressing about it. I'm not going ah oh, hell. I'm not writing. So like I know I've got to clear a bunch of stuff still. Uh, yeah. You know, as the year swings in, but then I know I'm going to go and write and do a recording thing. And what I want to do is not do a recording thing where I'm going okay. I'm making this album because I've got like you know happy African stuff and and blues stuff, and I've got a really slow stoner album that I want to make as well. Okay. Um, very very slow tempos you know um so i don't want to make go and, and make like i'm making this album i just want to just record set up a house set up drums and have guys just come in and play and then just record for for a whole six months you know and yeah. then just look at look at it and see what you're going to do with it rather than having a preconceived idea about the album you want to make whether yeah. that's whether that actually works i don't know but that's, that's what i want to do i think it will i think obviously it will um I loved what you were saying earlier, Robin, about going back to, you know, recording really authentically. Um, one of the producers that I worked with kind of said that he uses he uses like the whole computer and Pro Tools thing as he sees it as a a tape machine. You know. Yeah. Instead of paying three and a half grand a roll, <laughs> got a limited tape, but um, he tries to limit himself like that, you know. So and really let the let the thing be authentic and natural. Yeah. Well, when I when I record, when I do do record my own stuff, <clears throat> I tend to try and avoid, um, um, you know, doing cut and paste records where you do you like that thing where you do the one chorus and then you cut and paste it for yeah. all the chorus. I hate that. You know, um, yeah. you just don't get all of the little glitchy things that happen when you're making a recording. Um, you know, sometimes, okay, I'll admit, sometimes you, you you do the go that route, but by and large, if I'm doing a guitar take or a vocal take. I, I want to press go, and then maybe I'll drop in once or twice. But this wow. thing where you where you chip away, I want to get the take down. I want to record a performance. I don't want to, you know, then assemble, a, yeah. you know, a vibe. I want to capture yeah, a vibe. Exactly. You know? I think people people can, you know, they, they can't hear that. They can't hear really, I mean, just your sort of crew listening to your music can't really hear that, but they feel it. They feel when you've cut mm. and paste, you know, they don't. It just and I, I think the whole um i hope the whole world is going to move back towards um it certainly is like with video and stuff where um a cell phone video will have a lot more traction than a produced video um, i hope music goes the same way again where people start really getting into the authenticity of it with warts and all you know and um, seems to, seems to be that way i mean you look at some of these guys that are that are killing it on facebook like uh poe and larkin and and, and uh you know, I mean, it's 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 just the Facebook, and it's just them going live, and uh, playing the hell out of it. You know, um, yeah. so and people are responding to that, um, and yeah. it's kind of weird because I mean, I listen to the radio, and I mean, I, I I I'm forced to listen to the radio a lot. We listen to we listen to KFM. Well, I'm and I know the Carl Wasty show very well because I've okay. got a 13 year old. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, so when I'm doing Dad's uh, Taxi, we that's Billy what we listen. You yeah. listen to Billy Allen. <laughs> 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 well, you know, it's uh, and I actually must say, like some of the stuff I listen to, I'm like, well, there, there's a definitely a route for me to that stuff, like Post Malone or Twenty One Pilots or stuff like that. Kind of like these are fairly solid songwriters. It's actually quite staid songwriting. You know, they might have hit yeah. little production tweaks going on, but it's actually fairly conventional songwriting, and um, you know, and, and and I enjoy it. So, uh, yeah. so there's, there's, there's hope. <laughs> I know it, what's so cool is we, we're actually living in an era where like anything goes, you know, if it's good, it goes. Yes. And I, and I find with my stuff as well, um, it's, it's particularly when you get a wee bit older, is that um, kids will then, because you're not even competing with anything that's in their, in their sphere, they kind of yeah. go it's like, you know, if I go, if I was going to go watch BB King or, or, or an older artist, you know, it's, it's you want to see that they're, they're fully realized you know, personality, they, they, they don't have to compromise in any way, shape, or form. Um, so it, that's one of the benefits of getting older. Yeah. What are you listening to at the moment, Robert? Um, geez, I have to admit, I've been listening to the Beatenberg album quite a lot. Uh, oh, really? wow. Hanging Gardens of Beatenberg. I mean, I think, I think it's such a good record. Um, I really love that, that album. I mean, when I first heard it, I thought it's kind of quite studio y and a bit kind of muted energy yeah. wise. But as I've gone on listening to it, like the, the songs and the melodies are just so great, and the product, the producer's so good. Um, so I've been enjoying that album quite a lot. Um, in terms of other stuff, 
I've been getting quite, I've, I've been going back. I mean, there's a lot of acts that I missed. Um, you know, and now I sort of go back to them. Like all of a sudden I've decided I'll, I really like um, the, the Great Beyond by R.E.M. So I've been listening to that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I didn't, I didn't get into R.E.M. when they were happening. They were all over the show. And I was kind of, so I'm fine. I'm going, I'm going back to, to things like the Smiths. I never listened to the Smiths. Now I'm listening yeah, to the Smiths and going, Jesus, God, that's a, you know, so I'm enjoying it. Um, yeah. So I, I tend to go back and, and, and claw back yeah. the stuff that I missed. Um, but I enjoy, you know, out of the stuff that's coming out now, um, as I say, um, you know, when I hear, for example, 21 Pilots or something like that, pop stuff, because I'm hearing that in the radio. Um, then I've got mates who play me stuff that's big on the country, country scene, Jason Iqbal, um, that kind of Nashville, contemporary Nashville scene or country scene, which is yeah. really nice as well. There's a guy who's, is it ah, Steve Lowe, something like that, massive, he's signed to Anti, anti Records. Uh, his name escapes now. Big dude with the beard, and and he's he said he plays oh, yeah. acoustic guitar. Sean Low, Sean Low, and uh, like a really powerful performer, you know. He's a brawler yeah. like me. He, he yeah, can go yeah, in front yeah. of a rowdy, a rowdy pub, and he's not going to disappear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I enjoy I enjoy him. Um, yeah, uh, well, but I, I do I do battle to find stuff. I mean, what, what are you listening to at the moment? What are you enjoying? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, like, in a way, also gone, I'm kind of going back to all the stuff that... Can I have well, this blanket? Yeah. Sure you can. <laughs> yeah. Can you get this blanket out? Sorry, hold on, everybody. <laughs> can you get this blanket out? Sure, you can take it out. Can you get it out? Mom. Have you got your, your kids coming on? <laughs> yeah, they're going on, they're going on. Uh, uh, Robin, to answer your question, I've gone back to all the earlier stuff. I'm actually listening to NXS. Um, I love it. You two, um, I'm listening to like all the first things that got me going. Um, but I've always listened to music for songwriting um, o over and above a particular band. I've, of course, I've had my favorites, but I mean, um, you know, anything from... I mean, like you even said, 21 Pilots, when I first heard that the first hit song they had, I was like, wow, this is really amazing. And I actually loved the production of it. So, um, yeah, but I'm definitely listening to all the original stuff. Yeah, Michael Richie Dancing on the Ceiling was one of the first records that I bought um, for the songwriting. So. <laughs> Lionel, you can't go wrong. <laughs> yeah. No, so that, that Darren, um, so saying to Gary now that, that Darren doesn't like a big rowdy audience. That's me. That, I'm there. <laughs> and Darren, Are you we, that guy? When I'm there with you. When I'm with you to help you, then we, then we, then we rock it. <laughs> Darren, gonna, Darren, don't you notice it. that it's always, your, it's always your muso buddies who are, the, who are the loudest table when you're trying to get a show over. <laughs> you notice that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. We're going to start a, we're gonna start a new band called the Haspeens. Uh, <laughs> Darren and Brad Haspeens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no, no, we, we're going to have a jam again. together again. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do it. Anyway, I'm a Darren, thank you. Thanks for coming in, man. I hear Thanks someone who's got the blues. Yeah, <laughs> no, I haven't got the. I'm too happy to play the blues now. Sorry, I'm with you. Ah, dear. I look forward Lekker, to hearing. Man, I, I look, really look forward to hearing what you've done with Steve's new stuff, man. We'll chat soon. Lekker, man. Lekker. Okay. Chat soon. Cheers, Cheers guys. Steve Thanks, Walsh. Man. Thanks for charge, Jared. Yeah, oh, Steve Walsh was was, was he in J Bay for a long time as well, wasn't he? Uh, yes, Steve was in J Bay. He was restauranting then. Yes. Um, yes. What's the place called? I'm, I'm trying to remember the blues. Twelve bar, uh, twelve bar blues. 12 and then he was, blues. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and then he also was at um, that wee restaurant that overlooking Supers, just on Supers. Oh right. So so he's been cooking for many many years. Uh, yeah, he gets yeah. upset if I call him a chef. But he was a cook, yeah. and um, yeah, well, I remember no, Steve Walsh doing Carla Street, Carla Street in in Grahamstown. He was always like super popular. The, um, when when we went to the Grahamstown Festival, Steve Walsh was always there, whew, doing his thing. Yeah. Hey, how's it, Brad? In the UK, uh, or some yes, of them? I see Brad. Yes, uh, uh, and Robin, how's it, Robin? Oh no, I see. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's there, oh, there's another one, Brad Bradstock. There we go. There's a couple of Brads. Yes. And, uh, and, and Annette Stradom saying she wants to do trigger fish. Where is uh, trigger fish brewery? Um, that's in kind of strand at the other side okay. of the bay. Yeah. 
Very okay. nice. Oh, of course, the, the all of them, the, 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 the 80s stuff. Do, do, you enjoy, do you still enjoy playing that stuff? Or is it like, oh, oh for God's sakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I went through a period where, where I didn't like playing the old, the old songs. And some of them are like less than others, to be honest. But um, okay. I kind of, the thing is, I, I do get a, a little bit of pleasure out of playing them because they, they, they still do stand up on acoustic guitar. And so yes. I, I enjoy being able to play All of Women, um, It's a Shaky Town, After the Fire, that on an acoustic guitar. Uh, yeah. and um and they still go over so i mean and, and also there's that thing where and i realized this after i went to go see van morrison at um yeah. uh, the hammersmith odeon or wherever it was in london and he played a brown skin girl and he's in a, he's a notoriously grumpy old git anyway and when, when he played he apparently he hates playing brown eyed brown girl, girl. <laughs> yeah so 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 when it was he told me he obviously has to play it and he just stood yeah. there and he, was, and he said like here's your song and the band kicked <laughs> <them>. <laughs> and that's a real life. everybody's got one i mean and, and, and somebody said to me what you're going to go see frank sinatra he doesn't play my way and yeah. and, and, and there is yeah. that you know um yeah so you you you've got to re realize that some, maybe there's people that have come to see you they haven't seen seen you for tw ever or for 20 years and there's that yeah. song that they know just play them that song that's what's yeah, kept you going and is it would it kill you you know and yeah, so no, I, no. <laughs> <laughs> so i enjoy playing it but but i make it work for myself you know sometimes yeah. you get guys and i do and you know i have to say that it's a double-edged sword because you do get yes. people that love baby of them good and all of women who haven't listened to one thing that you've done in the last 20 years and <laughs> those are the fans you need like a hole in the head <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I tell you what, my wife said to me, I said to her, I said, Philip, do you want me to ask any, uh, any, any questions, Robin Alden, any questions? She says, ask him if he remembers me. I was the one in the tank top in 1985 in, <laughs> at the top. Sure. In the feather walk at all. <laughs> I was the tank top with the big frizzy hair. <laughs> It's coming oh, back man. to me now. <laughs> it's coming, it's coming. We, we got some, we got some tune. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at so many people looking They find a store, they turn away Maybe they hope for something better, yeah But with you, I stay You were all a woman to me There was something of you in every girl I see You were all a woman to me All a woman to me There is something of you In every girl I see You were all a woman to me Yeah, yeah, yeah And you were all a woman to me There is something of you In every girl I see You were all a woman to me Every single 
that was that was quite a lineup. Yeah, indeed. Was, uh, who, who was on that stage there? That was Pete Boerter was there. I saw that. Um, yep, that's Mel Boerters and Mel, Mel Boerters, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Rudy and Arthur, and um, I think Mark Hayes was on it. Uh, on that oh, one, Hayes, yes. Um, yes. yes, yes um, okay, right. Yeah, no, that was that was a super fun thing. I wish the sound was a bit better on that clip there. Just yeah, <laughs> no, 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 the sound wasn't great. There. Sorry, it was probably but, cell phone footage. <laughs> yeah. But but, um, um, but what, what was that? What was that in aid of those riders, eh? Yeah, that's the Riders of the Storm thing, which was a concept okay. that Mel Bird has put together, and um, we did that was we had a really nice run for about for about three three or four years, um, yes. yeah, and I there was kind of gen generally the uh, I was the token Soti. Yeah, I was offered a call to me. Do you know I, I, I loved it so much play, play, playing that show because the thing is. Because they're so well managed, you know, Afrikaans. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. they, if you get down yes. to it, they really are very well managed. So you'd be Authentic, playing like, Authentic, after Woody. the show, you'd be you'd be you'd be in the uh, you'd be in the combi, and then you'd go off to home and stuff. But now I always have had a couple of beers and stuff. So I'm the only Soti there, right? And yeah. they'll be talking to each other, and say, "Yo, no, no," and then they'll they'll see me, they'll see me, and they go, "Yo, that guy in there, they're going to English," <laughs> you know, early on in the evening. Then yes. <laughs> once a few beers have happened and there's like 12 of them sat around somebody's lounge, you know, and Valiant's telling stories, then it's just like, then you can forget it. <laughs> then it's just yeah, like, you then you're just going to hang on to your life. Because, but, but I'm actually quite good at that. I can understand. I can be in a, a, a okay. large group of Afrikaans people that I can follow quite well because my yeah, missus, yeah. My, my wife is Afrikaans, and she's got a okay, super okay. large Afrikaans family. I mean, they're like meerkats. I mean, they're just tons of them. Yes, well, that's the Frost yeah. family, is it not? Yes, it is. That's yes. Albert, uh, Albert's sister and, and Frank and Maggie, of course, are your, your in-laws from that's the, right. the Blues yeah. Brews. So uh, blues, she, it's yeah. solid, solid gene, genes, music genes there. Does she play yeah. as well? She doesn't. She doesn't. But she sings very loudly in the house. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Shouts at you. <laughs> oh, oh, that's classic. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I know. Fra I mean, Frank, Frank Frost from from back at uh, uh, Blues, uh, the Martel Blues Festival back in Grahamstown uh, was. I think it was probably one of Albert's first gigs with the band as well. Yes, um, I was. I was actually out, away for a lot of that. I was in the UK for a lot of those Martel stuff. But um, when I came back, I did a gig with the Blues Brews. Um, okay. at, at some venue in, in Somerset West. And I used to know Frank quite well. He was actually always very nice to me. You know, he would book, he would book my bands at a stair. Um, and yes, he, he okay. would be together here and there. Um, little fact, did he know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, and we did, we did the dry, we did the dry dock at Cape Town Docks, which was a great concert with the Blues Brews with Steve Walsh. Um, Clayton Frick was playing as well, um, so I, I mean I knew I knew Frank quite well. So it's, and it feels it feels kind of nice um, being in, being in a musical dynasty, you know. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I, and it's also as I, I say, that's the first thing I, I do. I do understand it quite well. I don't speak it that yes. good. So I'm, I'm actually <laughs> I, I, funny. I, we, we we just recently, you know, when I go to one of these dues where it's where it's Christine's family, um, yeah. you know, her, her uncle's her, uh, wife Charmaine. We have these beautiful conversations where we'll talk for 20 minutes. She talks to me in Afrikaans, and I talk to her in English. And it just works <laughs> absolutely fine. It was funny. You, you, when, when you were talking to Darren just now, I picked up a couple of uh, wees. You use we a lot. I put a wee little this and a wee little that. <laughs> well, I, I, you know what? I have to hack that back because I've started using it more and more as I get older. Maybe it's because my dad died about three years ago. And yeah. so um, I, and I find like... It's sort of comforting to you. Like I don't call. I, I say, you know, we're going down the tune. You know, I don't, I don't call it the town anymore. And uh, the house is and the, and the house is a hoose. Um, hoose. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, know, the north of, I always say in the north of England, it sounds it's it's a sound. It's, well, it's Irish as well. I think they they say house house, and that is oh, exactly yeah. the same as yeah. in Afrikaans. It's Afrikaans. Well, they say a house, and it, <laughs> but because I mean, a kirk is a church. In both uh, languages, Kirk, uh, Kirk. And, uh, Kirk. and um, there, there's quite a lot of similarities um, from the Dutch, from William yeah. of Orange. Hey. And, um, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know there are quite a lot of similarities, and I, and I find um, I still call the police the police. Um, that, that's not even affected. I still think of it because in in, in Kilwinning when I was a kid, 
It was the Polis, you know. <laughs> Polis. The Polis, yeah. Oh, classic. Ah. Oh, but no, no, back to back to the eighties. I mean, you know, you were some sort of sex god back then. Um, you know, basically, uh, that that was like the, uh, it was that that was the thing. Uh, Robin Hood, you know, all of women, that whole thing. Uh, what was it like back then? Was was it? Uh, there we go. There we go. You know, <laughs> sex symbol. All was the, the sex symbol vibe. <laughs> I like um, the crochet well, top, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. That was Mary Lou Berta, who, who was my sister-in-law at the time. I mean, this would be one of those. And I, and I regret to inform you that I actually noticed guys actually wearing some of those kind of crazy. They actually caught on just like a little bit, like maybe maybe two guys. <laughs> <laughs> I bumped into one of those. one of like, fashion trend. Dude, <laughs> don't follow me, honestly. <laughs> um yeah, you know, it's just like, you know, I decided quite quickly that that, that that was not really what I wanted to do. Um, yeah. And I think that that sort of element, it's it was not very good for music. I mean, I mean, the Beatles stopped playing live because they couldn't hear themselves play over the squealing, yeah. you know. Exactly. And I remember well, having that exact moment. And I, and I was Jeez. playing, I was playing um, we were doing a gig at Weinberg Girls High. And it was at the height <laughs> of the whole thing. And as, as, as I say on my website, it's not actually about the music. It's just you're the kind of the phase after the horsey one for, for, for young teenage girls. They have a horsey <laughs> phase. Yes, you know, and then they, and they, then they get stuff. like some, some oak whose pictures in the paper or something and they, they fixate on that. <laughs> and it's, music doesn't really come into it. And, and, I, and I remember yeah. having this exact moment. I was at, at one of the girls' home we were playing and for some reason they had, they had these steps in front of the stage with it. So the girls had come quite, quite high and they were going bananas, you know, and I was sort of playing and I was looking at them and I was sort of doing stuff that wasn't even musical. I'd like, like lift my guitar and they would react. And I remember having this, you having this detached vision where your, your brain's outside yeah. and you're like, I don't want to do this. You know, this is like, <laughs> what much to do with music? And, um, yeah. and I, think, I think a lot of artists, they get it, they get, they have to come to that uh, conclusion at some yeah. point. I mean, Hendrix, he made it through with yeah. you know setting his guitar on fire and doing the whole thing yeah. and that eventually became a bit of a pain for him and yeah. uh so you know you've got to be that's something you have to very handle very carefully and i was kind of yeah, grateful yeah. that i was just in sunny south africa so that little my little bit of being teen stardom whatever yeah. it was never that big and yeah. you know I mean, there are a lot of oaks out there who still hate me resolutely from those days <laughs> i get it you know <laughs> they'll never take these things to your position ever it's fine you know <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was. I mean, my I know Philippa is is all about uh, it's yourself and Pierre de Chamois. Those were the those were the two. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, well, that's right. I mean, and, and also I mean, when I was in was was in, was in high school, all the girls that I would wanted to get with, they were all in love with Rabbit. So we oh, hated course, Rabbit. We hated Rabbit. Yeah. And, and of course, they you know they were amazing musicians uh, in, in Rabbit. Yes. Yes, but um, yes, you know. right. but, but they didn't care about the music. <laughs> they didn't care about that stuff. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, oh, I'm happy now, now that now that I've come come I'm getting old and decrepit. Um, that's yeah. less of a, yeah. <laughs> because I mean I sense that you that you are very serious about your 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 music and the and the the you know it's it's not it's not really about the big show. It's it's about the music and 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 that's it for you. Is that, is that right? Am I right in assuming that? Yes, absolutely. I mean, the thing is, um, if, if you're playing, um, uh, it's always been about the songs. And I realize in South Africa that, that, that that's not like a strong point because people like a bit of a show and yes, stuff but going entertainment. on. And entertainment. So they do everywhere. So <laughs> uh, I, I sort of, what I enjoy with, with restaurants is actually just talking crap on, on stage and yes. telling stories. And that, that that's sort of my way of making up for the lack of being able to do, you know, split jumps yeah. and stuff like that. Yes. Or so comedy, I'm, like... I'm a, I'm a terrible dancer. So, so um, <laughs> you know, t t t telling stories and being able to connect with the audience that way and also just breaking down that thing between, you know, the, the, the star on stage and the audience and, like, just, just breaking that thing and yeah. connecting with people so they feel uh, th that they can chirp me stuff. In fact, Rhett, somebody's asking me for hearty right now, <laughs> which, is, which is a story it's that Rhett. we tell. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> you, want, you want the audience Rhett. to be able to chirp you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know. Yeah, Gary's looking for the, for the comment. I don't know. It's, it's gone up, gone up somewhere in the in the things. Uh, what, what did he say? 
Well, there's that story about when they when they shout at you in, 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 in most yes. in the Mossel Bay area where they shout, play RC, play RC. Ah, and, yeah. and if you're from out of town, you don't know, right? But if you're from yeah, if you're no, local sure. musicians, you know, you know what they mean. And so I was playing yes. and they were shouting yes. at him. And one of the local musicians took me entire aside at half time and said, No, my brother, they want you to play RC a bad moon rising. <laughs> so, yeah. so, I I always, bad moon always, rising. <laughs> so I always tell that <laughs> story. My favorite story with that was is, is a guy coming to ask us for Ivan the Tiger. Ivan the Tiger? Yes. Ivan the Tiger. Ivan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. We, we got, we're going to get to, through some, some, uh, some of the comments we missed here. Uh, at one time, Mercury Lounge, Robin was playing Anton Marshall and I were DJing. Uh, the turnout was so low, we used the audience cheering audio from the Nirvana Unplugged EC. <laughs> Nirvana Unplugged. <laughs> oh, Thank you. You know. Thank you for having my back. You know, so, having, you. having your back, indeed. <laughs> you know what you can do, Art. When you when you're making love, um, uh, you can use that same CD because it's better. You know, but but use a live CD, not not a normal CD. When you you know get in the mood, because it, at least with a live CD, it gives you applause every four minutes. <laughs> well, <laughs> much appreciate. What is this? Uh, uh, good cats know bedrock originally from Aronimunt. Uh, shout uh, the shout lads and dad and one, uh, shout lads and dads one. No, I've never know. played Aronimunt. I've got a very good friend I've from Aronimunt who's lived around, but I've never, I've never I've played Volfus Bay. Have you, have, you, have, have, you done, have you done Volfus? Do you know? I, I've, I, you know what I've done on Dangwa. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I went through Volfus Bay and we had, we had a little bit. Of, what's it called? Joe's or something there? There's like jo a pub there. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, Joe's pub. We went through there, but but we went on to Ondongwa and and, and Ondongwa and did a gig there. It was like um, one of the old army bases uh, that, that that's no longer, obviously. Uh, is it Ondongwa? Uh, or Shikati, I think, up there. Um, okay, yes. I see, uh, I see Anthony saying, caught up with Robin the Ride in the Storm in Vintuk Country Club. Oh, there we go. That's right. That was the yeah, right show at, 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 the, at the, the club there. We had, we had a great, we had a great night there. We did it. We did also have a very bad night in Vintage with the riders, <laughs> being a New Year's Eve. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Um, oh, well. We played this. Yeah. Anyway, you know what? That's a long story. No, I'll leave, I'll leave, no, I'll no, no, no. Come on, tell me. Come on. You can't leave us hanging now. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it was it was actually a uh, it was a sports center that had been put together. This humongous sports center that wasn't all operational right. yet, and it was one of these kind of you know, dodgy um, cabal of, of, of businessmen who'd got together and they thought they were going to make a killing on this night. Uh, yeah, so of course. We've got a so great they, plan. We've got this they, huge they, venue. Plan. So, I, I mean, how many times have you done it? It's like, guys think it's like in the old days when, when, we used, when they used to do stadiums. You know, you get some guys who think, it still happens today. People start a festival. They think, how do you make a lot of money? Well, you put on a one-off event, you put a whole bunch of bands on and you're going to make millions. Yeah. And they don't realize that those, that those events that – you know, like Opi Kopi or the, up the creek, they yeah. started off to 150 people and it took them six yeah. years to, to build it. Yeah, to build, to the, build it. You know, <laughs> but they were going to have this big thing and it's going it's to make them a lot of money. So they put this thing on. They were expecting like 2,000 people and yeah. um, they got like like 200 people. So they were going down uh, in flames. They, they were losing a lot of money. We'd driven out. We, uh, we had the drummer, uh, Guppy, um, insane Guppy. drummer. Oh, fantastic. Like brilliant, Guppy's. brilliant drummer. Amazing drummer. Yes. And uh, you know, all big band to come out and do this New Year's show, and um, and these guys lost their shirts. So the next day, we got invited around to one of the Oaks an afternoon uh, for, for an afternoon bride. He was plying us with oysters, and and what I realized was like when Oaks going to deny you, he generally softens you up first. He did everything. Oh, yeah, they got <laughs> they the money. For us. And then a week later, just like. Oh man, you know, just can't pay you. And and uh, you know, they had, they had lamb on the spit there. I had a piece of that lamb. If that was lamb, you know, I've got a, I've got some land in Mykonos I can sell you. I mean, it's it's it was it was it, it was tough, gamey old boot scop <laughs> that they got from some farmer, <laughs> and they put that out. And I don't know, we, oh, we could have probably been paid in 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 in, in, in scarp flace. Um, after that kick. Anyway, we never we never got paid. Actually, no, no, oh, no. We, did, we did pay, got paid a little bit, but we got stiffed. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Always, always. Yeah, I see. Uh, Robin and Wendy Oldfield, the music kitchen was a, one of the best shows I've ever been to. Um, I, I've actually got a little clip of you and Wendy. Let's have a quick quiz. Oh, okay, awesome.
sun on my face I close my eyes Here I am And the smell in the air When the thunder rolls And it pours Like it just don't give a damn It's a place within It's the wall Thank you, man. In fact, that, that, that's, that's Wendy's new, new, new she's just done a, a solo album, or well, she's doing a solo okay. album, and uh, that song, Home, is going to be the single which they're releasing on the 15th of January. Oh, so, um, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful, that's, it's beautiful. And yeah, I see Tim Parr saying hello there as well. Phenomenal okay, guitar player. <laughs> yeah, indeed, yeah. Did, did he In not fact, play with Wendy as well? Um. Well, yeah, I'm. Hey, Tim, I'm just going to tell you, I listened to the whole of the Backstop album, driving up uh, the coast a couple of days ago. Yeah, such a good album, man. Backstop, excellent. Backstop. We'll, we'll have to have a, I'll have to have a listen as well. Though. We'll have to have a go at it. And us, I, I mean, I, I know, I know you, you and Wendy have been playing together. You've played together quite a lot over the years. Yeah, well, we've got a uh, uh, duo, Oldfield. I can't believe we played yes. together for for two years before we figured out that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and we, we do uh, kind of we do um, the, the coast and Joburg, Cape Town. And we've been working sort of uh, it must be three or four years now that we do it. So we lock off we lock off a period and go like, okay, we're going to do a tour, and we lock off our time, and then we do it, and then we go back to our to our own lives okay. and everything. But right now, oh, Wendy's uh, when doing a solo album is coming after that, so um, okay, you know, we're going to support that. A brilliant, brilliant voice, and, and we, we'll have to have her on sometime and chat about her because she's got an amazing history as well. O awesome, um, talented lady that, and never seems to age. <laughs> I know. What the hell, man? <laughs> Rock and roll. Uh, I see uh, uh, Robert say, saying, uh, I saw your splashy fin. It was at splashy fin 2000. Yeah. Um, yeah, wow. Jeez. Have it, 2000. Years, I, I, really? Yeah, I think we were also playing there. We played that same splashy as well with Eminem and yeah. Child. It was a, that was great. Uh, have you ever no, been no. To black, back to splashy? Uh, back to splashy? I haven't. Say, eh? um, I, I did. No, I didn't. Just, I, I think that was the one time I did splashy. I think I might have done the uh, off Broadway stage. You know, the, the the acoustic stage again, but not very much. Eh? The, 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 a lot of the big festivals they tend to go. Um, yeah. You know, hectic, uh, hectic. So, so, <laughs> so young. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, especially turn into the thing where it's where it's, where it's, it's more of an EDM dance festival now. Yeah, that's, and, and that, that's what it is. So, well, yeah. I mean, I, I, the, the last time I went, uh, she was—I just felt my age. I got to say, <laughs> the, the, yeah. um, actually, Pedro Pedro asked me to go and uh, MC 2014. I think was my last one. And, oh my word, because I'd been played in 2000, 99, 2000, 2001. I think I'd done a couple of gigs. And uh, and I went back and whew, uh, I realised uh, that I've got older. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Maggie um, Caton saying hello and uh, Art, uh, Art Pereira again. Uh, he says at the Whammy Bar. 
Punk rock band right. with Robin's band. Did you play okay, punk? Okay, so blimey. Picked up the phone, we were double booked, so said we could still play. Jeez, that's not... <laughs> did I ask you for money? I'll show you. Oh, classic. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's brilliant. Art, art I, I is, um, in fact, art, I don't even remember this, but you were my first friend on MySpace. Oh, uh, MySpace. We yeah. were just talking about these things, like going through, you know, uh, the, 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 when you, in the 80s, obviously, you, you, had to, you had to have the record company, you have to do the thing. These days, it's a, it, it, you, have to, you have to move with the times, and it's so difficult to change over to all these things, you know. Some of them, MySpace and these things, they last for a couple of years, and then they're gone. I know. Well, I mean, I have a lot of conversation with that, about with artists where they go, it's this and it's that. And it's, but I, I always say, say, say one thing, just cast your mind back to when you were doing gigs and you were standing under the Eastern Boulevard in Cape Town in a howling southeaster with a bucket of glue and some posters. And you were slapping the posters <laughs> on with the glue getting slapped in your face and, you know, yes. the police shouting at you. And, you know, there was a lot of, t that, that took a lot of time. And I mean, it was fun. As somebody pointed out on Facebook, that yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah up to a point. It was, it, it was fun. Yeah. But, you know, it was also a lot of effort and it was a lot of money and time. So, you know, that was hard. So sitting and, and getting on top of the social media and just actually paying attention to your stuff and getting and getting your hand your own hands on because we used to complain about the re major record companies. These are now tools yeah, that yeah, you, yeah. you can have yourself. So it's something to yeah. be celebrated and get and, and get with it as well and put the energy in and, and you know, own your own thing. Do it. Do yeah. It. Just get out there and do whatever you can. And get, get and 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 do those gigs and get you know because that that also yeah, your your, your skill set gets better i see i see red saying battle of the bands early 80 c point uh, <laughs> uh what massive swell cool <laughs> line up <laughs> oh nice yeah uh, we, won we, won that, we won that one eh, Red. that was just like the band we won the battle of the bands oh the battle of the bands excellent excellent and i see art saying no they didn't ask for money okay no well that's no. fine <laughs> That's a relief. my first MySpace friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. In those days, it was just email as well, you know. You had to just try to email. I remember um, he was the guy that was looking for Rodriguez, was sending out emails. And, and uh, um, Sugar, what's it? Um, St Steve, it's not Sigerman. Um I can't remember. Steve, it's yeah. Steven. Sure. Steve Sigerman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, was, he, had a, he had an email bunch that he used to send in these bulk emails and you could reply to everyone. <laughs> That's, That's the right, way he did yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, man, uh, Robin, uh, we're going to wrap things up. We're going to keep you here all night. Otherwise, we can't talk the whole bloody night. But, um, but I just want to find out a few, a few little things from you. For, I always ask my, my guests for their, for their proudest moment and then their worst moment or their, or their cuckest gig. That's often the funniest story. So I don't know if you've got uh, the, the proud moments. I don't know if you've got it. I mean, uh, you, you, uh, opening for C C6 Steve has got to be one of the big ones. I love C6 Steve. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I, I love opening for him. There we go. There we There's go. your poster. And there we go. C6 Steve and Robin Ald. And you check Ed Sheeran's there. He hadn't broken yet. Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Ben Howard, yeah. Oh, yeah. my word. You, know, you check, you know, hang in with the big boys here. And what, what was that? What what was this? Uh, that was that was seven. 2011. I, I see on the okay, on the poster. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, yeah, that's yeah, just yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. No, that was that's that was a, a lot of fun. Uh, I just did, did it solo as well. You know, and it's okay. It's okay. You know, the kids. You get a bunch of youngsters in front of the stage. You go in there with acoustic guitar, and they rock yeah. out with you. And they love it. And yeah. <laughs> where, where is it? Croyd Bay. Where is that? It's uh, North Devon. Oh, okay. um, yeah, this, the Gold Coast thing is, is put on by a guy, an ex-Durbanite actually, a, a mate of mine, Sean Latham, and his son's actually a, a, a good artist as well. Um, okay. So, you know, we sort of care, hook up and, he, uh, you know, do it every now and again. Um, yeah. But yeah, great festival. If anybody's ever in the UK and you're in over the summertime, that's a, that's a good one to go to. That's great. And did you meet our C6 Steve and did you meet Ed Sheeran? No, I didn't. I didn't. I but didn't, um, was you know, the thing is, it's, it's you know, there's big, there's the, the, that particular yeah. kind of a thing. It's um, I mean, you don't even get to park your, leave your car in the parking after after you finish your set. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's no, no, no. Unless you got a helicopter like C6 Steve. 
Okay. <laughs> I no, have an guys, did arrive, guys did arrive by helicopter to, to that gig. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, because like, a C6 Steve's is supposed to be a hobo. Well, I think that's all marketing. <laughs> I think that's marketing. I think he ran a studio yeah. successfully for a long time before he decided to get away. But what the hey, you know? I mean, he's he's yeah, a painter, yeah, yeah. plays and great. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal. I just love his I love his style of playing and 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 his and his three what, two two string three string gu guitar with a hubcap. <laughs> it's great. I know. Keeping it simple. Um, proudest moments. Proudest moments. Um, gee, uh. I guess one of the ones that I still remember, and even though it wasn't that, that great a set, it was just nice to to play, was the uh, Ellis Park concerts. Um, oh, where did we you play five? Yeah, we played the second did one. Did you play them? Yeah, yeah. We didn't play the first year. We played the second year. And, yeah. um, you know, there were, I don't know, there was like 100,000 people there. Yeah. And Massive. looking out and just seeing it going like that and, and having people rocking yeah. to your stuff because – um, you know, black audiences have always enjoyed my stuff. If I'm getting in front of them, yeah. even going back to the old days, you'd be playing yes. a restaurant and the, 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 I was eating or actually ignoring it. And then the staff are hanging out the, 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 the hatch yeah. going like, <laughs> yes. like a, you know, yeah. always been like that. Um, yeah. You know, so it was just nice to get to in front of a huge audience and, and have a vibe. Yeah. So that, that was like a real moment that I remember. That is, that is, that is a big one. That's a big one, Robin. That's, uh, I remember those concerts that were absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I've, got, I've, I've also seen uh, Avoid over there doing doing their set, uh, incredible, um, as well. But that that just that huge huge audience, insane. Uh, uh, Robin used to come rock climbing with us in the mid '80s at Silver Mine board at Boulder. Nice, hey, nice bloke. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been with Ward Walker, I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't know where where it is. But Craig, he's a nice. You're a nice bloke as well, Craig. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, um, so so now now, now the, the my my best are the are the are the crappiest gigs. Your cr your shittiest gig ever. Okay, well there's, there's a bit of a story attached. This is some of the actors that know my shows will know this because I tell this one. It was actually um, our exercise in playing uh, at a at a concert in Bloom. You know, just the 80s. And and our manager at the time, he battled with trying to get us to sound like like Depeche Mode, but he thought maybe if you could get us to dress like Depeche Mode, we'd be onto something. So we had a designer and we got, we got, we, we had all these eighties clothes given to us. And I had this like kind of a, a cape, a cape with beads <laughs> along the bottom and like tights yeah. with a, with a pink <laughs> web between my knees sort of thing. <laughs> and the like, bait, like a flying thing. Like a flying thing, yeah. It was like, like a one of those flying squirrels that goes from tree to tree and ugly. You know? And and um and the bass player, Rob Rob Mack, he had like this Michelin man uh kind of bumblebee outfit that was head to toe with these black and yellow stripes going all the way around it. <laughs> My other bee. And uh, so we played, uh, we, we, and we, we were going up to do this, this, this festival, uh, this big concert, which is one of those ones that we were talking about earlier, where the guy thought that he yes. was going to make like a million bucks. Million. And it, it, it was the main stadium in Bloom. And we <laughs> went up to, to play it, and we were going on after Patricia Lewis. And, oh. um, I remember, and I remember arriving at the back of the stage, and Patricia, she hadn't wised up and gone for the Afrikaans market. She was still foolishly trying to crack the English market. And um, she had this like super sexy routine, um, and she had this like like pa painted on cat suit vibe, and it was she was doing this routine. I think it was like sort of hillbrow bump and grind. I think could be best described. <laughs> and she was doing this super sexy routine going, and then we were stood at the back, and looking out from the back of the stage, I could see they were they were trying to get like thirty thousand people there, and they had about yeah. one hundred and sixty. They had about one hundred and sixty people there, I, oh. and they were all. 17 year old bloom male youths like oh, in front of the stage. Funny rugby spot. <laughs> and they were all watching Patricia like like this kind of a thing. Like just <laughs> completely drool and transfixed by, by Patricia, you know. And then at the back I, I thought, oh we're stuffed, you know. And we went on and of course we were, you know, we played, you know, firstly of the 160, like 158 just left immediately. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even played a note. Just oh, yeah. inconsolable. Yeah, we weren't, we yeah. weren't Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. 
And then and then there's the two oaks. We started the song, and the two oaks came up to the front of the stage, and they looked at the pedals that I was playing through. Yeah. And then they pissed off as well. So we were playing in this massive stadium to nobody. It was empty. <laughs> <laughs> and then I looked over. I looked over to the bass player standing there in his bumblebee outfit, and he looked over to me standing there with my little cape. And um, and we never wore those eighties clothes again. That was the, that was the death of the eighties clothes. That was the death. That was it. No more. I see. I see this. your little escort panel van. I don't think he's talking uh, about your my Ford. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that yeah. car is the reason why I'll never buy another Ford. <laughs> it's a passion wagon. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh no. I remember I was chuckling out, uh, uh, chucking it down with the rain during the set at the Gold, uh, the, the Gold Coast Festival. Well, they were pretty was, dry on the stage. That was, that, was, that was the second one, I think. Uh, yeah, right. I think the second one where, what was his name? The Aussie dude. Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, they, 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 I did a couple of them. Okay. <laughs> no. Oh, sorry. My wife's correcting me here. I, I think she's done <laughs> no. quite well. She's been listening to me the whole night. She hasn't corrected me once. So this is, this is good. Yeah. If you've seen Gino's spot before, you'll know that when Philip is doing the ticket, I get it, I get it all the time. <laughs> you always get corrected. Okay. Like, cape is better than what? Uh, cape is better than gigging in shorts. <laughs> you know, in Bloom, they, they're okay with shorts in Bloom. Maybe that would have been a better plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y Yan Direction. Yan Direction. Could have done it. Oh, man, yeah. Robin. But thank you so much for coming on, man. Uh, I know well, we keep we kept you long. It's been a long it's been a long session for you. What have I, what, it's all right, but pe people have been enjoying it, so it's been great. The, the comments have kept on coming. So, thank you. Th thank thank you. It's been such fun. And tell your producer, nice editing job. Oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know that. So putting this together. That's yeah, all, he's obviously he's obviously a hot shot. I mean, I know he is. But you know, he gets out there. He does a bit of. A bit of, you know, people say editor king, editor king. He's just doing his job, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jimbo, your bass player should have had a fat, uh, what? A been a fat man. <laughs> fat man and Robin. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Oh, nice. You had a bumblebee outfit on. I think that's what he was referring to. Like a yeah. show. Thanks, dudes. Thank you, Nick. And thank you, Robin, all from co for coming on the show. It, uh, we appreciate your time. You, you are so self-effacing. You are an absolute legend of SA music. Uh, no matter what you think of yourself, <laughs> you, are, you are that. And, uh, and many, many, many people giving lots of love here tonight. Uh, thank you so much for coming on and, and giving of your time. Thanks, you know, thanks, to, thanks to all the guys that checked in and, and gave a chirp. Um, lovely to see you on here, and uh, hopefully we'll catch you at a gig sometime uh, in the not too distant future. Excellent, and, and it's a good way to end with your cat behind you licking its balls. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the best. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the other side, the other side. <laughs> there, your, your cats are coming in for food, buddy. <laughs> you better go and feed them before they yeah. mutilate themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I see someone from Sweden. My God, Blue, Blue Baggins. Hello, Blue. I don't know how you got, you got, you got that. Oh, it's a, a big red uh, B for Blue. From Sweden. We was putting some ABBA into your, into your set. Well, I saw Elvis Costello playing Knowing Me, Knowing You. So could be. Oh, there we go. There we go. We yeah. can do it. <laughs> we can do it. But thank you, Robin. It's time for the competition. The Oaks have got to guess the song now. Uh, so, and we're going to send you a, a, we'll send you a, a case of Fitch and Leeds as well for your troubles. Thank you so much. It's Thank you. Thanks so much. You know, it's awesome. Excellent. All right. So we're going to, we're going to do the compo now. Thank you, to, thank you to Robin. What a, what a lovely guy. We've got a, 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 I'm going to play the drums for you. I'm going to do a song. It's going back to when Robin was, well, had, his, had, his first, uh, had his first album out, but it's not Robin. I've been using another band. See, it's like a secret. So a trick. I'm going to try and trick you. Uh, so it's, um, uh, I want the name of the artist and the name of the song in the comments. And you will win yourself Fitch and Leeds because thank you to Fitch and Leeds and thank you to Spa and thank you to Amubia, our internet. Uh, I'm going over to drum cam. Let's hit the drum cam. Yeah, I get to play drums finally. That's right. And I uh, want the name of the song and the name of the artist in, and then we can win a, yourself a thing of Fitch and Leeds even if you're in England or if you're in Sweden. It's fine. Okay, let's hit it. Yeah. Oh, 
Sorry, don't finish. Still not playing. Oh. Hang on. Now, Trek's not playing for some unknown reason. Uh, should be. Uh, I don't know why it's not playing. Oh, dear. Are we going to have to skip the compo this week? Are we going to try and get it? We're going to try and get it. We'll try and get it. All right. Oh, Ricky Ticket Tavis, Mongoose is gone. Ricky Ticket Tavis, Mongoose is gone. Coming around to kill your snakes, the boy, my love. Oh, Ricky Ticket Tavis, Mongoose is gone. because uh, for some reason I can't get the track going here. Mr. Cockup is always around. Okay, give me camera one here. There we go. Uh, there we go. There we go. All right. So the winner is Anthony Cole. You won. <laughs> you won it by default. Anthony Cole will send it, send it over. Thank you very much for joining us at Gino Spot tonight. Thank you to Robin, our, our amazing guest. Thank you to Fitch and Leeds, and thank you to Spa. And uh, we'll see you on Saturday. Relax, sit down. Coming out of P.E. town Don't drink, find a shot Never mind your liver Get to Gino's spot Gino's spot Get to Gino's spot Gino's spot Have a laugh, have a giggle And exercise your middle Have a Gino shot Gino shot Get to Gino's spot Gino's spot Get to Gino's spot Gino's spot Have a laugh, have a giggle And exercise your middle